Who doesn't want to freeze themselves to scream-worthy pain to shed a few kilograms of body fat? You're in luck because I've got the video for you. Seriously though, there's a study that's made the rounds on the effect that cold water immersion and discovered some pretty remarkable effects in humans. That's you. Fortunately, you don't have to freeze to death to achieve these results, but let's get into the details. The idea behind cold water immersion is to subject your body to cold to stimulate the generation of brown fat cells. Brown adipocytes, or fat cells, are unique from the typical white adipocytes because they are extremely energetically inefficient. In the case of overall fat loss, that's a very good thing. The less efficient cells are, the more energy that they waste, causing them the need to take up and utilize more fat molecules to make more energy. If this happens repeatedly, your white fat, where most of your body fat is housed, will be slowly depleted of fat molecules, turning you into Timothy Chalamet, even if not quite literally. The point is, you'll be lean. In addition, there's an inverse relationship between brown adipose tissue and cardiometabolic disease, meaning the more brown fat in your body, the less cardiometabolic disease. That's an association though, just to be clear. There's a lot more here from how your nervous system activates these brown fat cells through the release of a neurotransmitter norepinephrine binding receptors known as beta adrenergic receptors on the fat cells, but we'll leave that be for now. The overall point is that more brown fat is linked to higher likelihood to lose overall body fat and have improved health. Okay, so what did the researchers do and what did they find? Essentially, they compared two groups of people against one another. They recruited people who regularly engage in winter swimming versus people who don't. They matched the groups by age, weight, physical activity, and multiple other factors between the groups, at least the best that they could. Then they exposed both groups, the winter swimmers and the non-insane people, I mean the control group, my apologies, to cold water and warm in a regulated manner and performed a series of measures to tease out differences. Okay, so first, did they experience changes in their brown fat? Actually, yeah, we see that here. This is a measure of blood sugar uptake by the brown fat cells. The green on the left are the control group and the right side, the purple, are the masochists. <laughs> I'm sorry, I meant the winter swimmers. TC there stands for thermal comfort. So at a warm temperature, not freezing their buns off. The cooling is when they were exposed to cold therapy. If the dots and lines go up, that means that more blood sugar was taken up by the brown fat cells. As we can see, relative to the thermal comfort condition, cooling increased blood sugar uptake for both groups. I can even show you a picture of what that looks like here. Notice that the dark splotches around the neck, the clavicle, and the sternum for when these people are cooled. That's the glucose, the sugar tracer uptake. It's pretty neat. In fact, if we look at an oral glucose tolerance test, a test where the researchers are measuring the ability for the cells of the body to clear blood sugar from the body, at the end of the test, the winter swimmers had lower overall blood glucose compared to the control group, although they started at the same point. We can reconcile the difference here and not in the uh, brown fat cell glucose uptake data that we just went over because it's likely that the winter swimmers have a greater absolute amount of brown fat cells. At least that's my educated guess. Now, all that leads us to the most unbelievable results. If we look at the actual energy expenditure, otherwise stated as total metabolism, you'll note that there's no difference between the two groups when at a comfortable warm temperature, but there's a significant increase in metabolism when cooling. In addition, the winter swimmers have an even more robust effect. We can see that more easily quantified here, a near 500 calorie boost in the controls and a near 1000 calorie boost in the winter swimmers. Those are massive effects. The researchers point out that this is not all explained by greater activity of brown fat, and in fact, they show some evidence that muscle activity is increased as well. Still, regardless of the responsible tissue, these effects are unbelievable. And that's exactly why I'm having a tough time believing this. 
To be clear, I'm not denying the data, but even the researchers point out that other studies have indicated very mild increases in total metabolism from brown fat tissue in humans, sometimes like 50 times less, which is why the researchers point out that there may be something else going on here, like the muscle activity angle. But they also speculate that other studies have looked at people in their 30s, and these individuals of this study that we're in uh, are in their 20s. I gotta admit, I don't buy that for a millisecond. I've never seen a 50-fold difference between 20 and 30-year-olds, but maybe that's just me grasping at days gone by in desperation. I think what we can say is that metabolism does increase regardless, and it might truly be by that astounding of a magnitude, even if the effect is not solely driven by brown fat. If you're one of those uh, masochists that wants more details on the cold immersion protocols used, just uh, jump on over to the Physionic Insiders. I'll be putting it all together there for you. Plus, you get access to all my work, step-by-step -step guides, premium podcasts, and much more. It's linked in the description for you. So, what's the takeaway here? The takeaway is that cold immersion helps insulin sensitivity, as we saw with improved glucose tolerance test, which was seen with no differences in insulin, by the way. We also know that cold immersion increases metabolism, partly due to brown fat cell activity, it seems. So if you're inclined to expose yourself to very cold several times per week, you might reap some pretty significant benefits, although I would like to see some of the results here replicated. Either way, the one thing that I do know with 100% certainty is that another video of mine is painless to experience, unlike cold immersion. Unless you hated this video, in which case, eh, it's a toss-up. I'll see you over there.